Asali Forth Paladins, and welcome back to another episode of Stuff the Command, or I'm Pass Plus Mod. I'm Admiral Tarek of the Dreadnought Hatremus Hurdle as we continue our campaign against the Liren Star Empire, and we are also desperately on the hunt for a monarch battleship carrier, because that would be amazing to have. Unfortunately, we haven't quite come, ac come across one in the road yet, and so we've been sort of focusing our campaigns against sort of empty space for now. There is, of course, the Trinary here, which will be very difficult to actually crack, but until that actually happens, well, before then we're going to get our battleship carrier. So let us continue our securing operations, or at least attempting to, should a mission actually spawn. And we will grab everything around the planet of 4-2, as it appears to be sort of our main base of operations. The planet that we have become the champion of. And as we look through the shipyard list again, because we're desperately looking for a monarch battleship carrier, uh, we can see quite a few of the x -Type heavy cruisers have shown up. There is, of course, the XCA, which is a little disappointing in terms of heavy cruisers, but the XCF has much more power and, well, a lot of Gatling 2 phasers, which is pretty cool. Also, heavy phaser A's, which is an interesting weapon choice. Not necessarily ideal, but cool nonetheless. So as we scroll down, we don't see any battle stations which we want to set up in the middle of the uh, the middle of the trinary, nor any battleship carrier. So let's just continue to put down the pressure. A patrol mission, straight up, good way to begin the day. After all, patrols are nice, easy, and uncomplicated, and demonstrate exactly how awesome this game can be. But we're just going to sit still for a little bit, and we're going to overload every single weapon on the ship. We dem we experimented a little bit with that in the last episode, sort of what would happen if we started overloading everything, and the results were interesting to say the least it was quite a quite a lot of fun actually if i'm completely honest with myself and so we've decided to sort of incorporate it as part of our semi-normal starting technique however it does mean that we can't really do much of anything so we have to sit still and just sprint to the speed of time forward while we wait for our hellbores to charge the target of the day is a light cruiser according to this he's a pfwx sounds like a pseudo frigate tender but we're not entirely sure we will find out relatively soon once he gets within a range of 30 he will deploy all of his pseudo frigates should he have any and we can tell exactly what we're getting our hands on so let's sap that shield budget now that all systems are uh, powered up and we'll get in here a little bit quicker we are dreadnought so it's not too terrible that we're traveling kind of slowly but we're gonna have some fun with him he did deploy two pseudo frigates it looks like could be more uh three is it going to be just the three? It looks like just the three, but that's fine. I think we've got enough firepower to basically jump on top of him and nail him and annihilate him in just our weapon systems. Wow, are you standard interceptors? You are? Wow. Thunderfang has open fire. However, we can pop that bubble with our Hellbores. The interaction between Hellbores and ESGs is an interesting one, to say the least. When a Hellbore hits an ESG, even if it misses the target, it deals the damage directly to the ESG, which, you know, if you're overloading your ESGs, suddenly you're taking an absolute massive ton of damage, and it wasn't possible for you to miss. So, really, Hydrants versus Lyrans were kind of their hard counter. And we've also managed to grab that tile. Let's see if we can grab the next one as well. We want to get the full flower going on around the planet itself to make sure that the enemy can't get in on us. If we can pull that one off, we can feel nice and safe in our nice little home. So another patrol in the middle of the asteroids. However, the target is too close, clearly, to overload everything. So we're just going to go standard fusion cannon overload. And today we bought escorts, HMS Invincible and HMS Hatchet. So two excellent vessels. Of course, it would be even cooler if this was the Hatchet Man. Because on our Rogue Tech campaign, we have seen just how amazing those can be. And we're running to a CCX. So a Liren Command Cruiser X type. Capital X suffix, by the way. Which means it was designed with the new power systems in mind. And so is quite deadly with lots of X-type phasers. They are not, they do not play nice with you at all. However, they do not make maximum use of the brand new X-type weaponry that recently was invented. Only the Phaser X, which granted is a fantastic piece of kit, but you're not going to see them packing ESG lances, which are really powerful and scary pieces of kit as well. So now that we are fully charged, oh, almost, the Hellbores is still charging up, but that's fine. We're going to start sprinting in towards the enemy. We have our electronic counter countermeasure going to make sure that he is unable to mask his own presence and position, and we'll dive on top of him and nail him with everything we've got. Probably won't kill him, but we're going to work on it. And in order to work towards that goal of taking as little damage as possible, we shall deploy our two fighter squadrons, keep them in nice and close so that they don't get too far out of ahead of us. That way we can pop any bubbles that he happens to generate with our Hellbores against his ESGs. And I anticipate he'll have at least four ESGs. It could be as many as six, but I would be really surprised if that were the case. Four seems to be the right number for a heavy cruiser designed in the old style. There's a line of heavy cruisers that the Lyrans end up creating, though, that really goes back on that. They only go down to the two heavy 
to the uh, two ESGs, and they cherry that out for more disruptors. Uh, I don't think the disruptor battlecruiser design is per particularly terrific, although it appears he's one of them. He's got six disruptors and two ESGs. So he's not of the old design, simply of the old hull chassis, but definitely with the newer concepts in how to build ships. It looks like the hatchet is getting a little bit close, but the hatchet seems to be perfectly happy with that, so who am I to judge? I'm just going to go right on to... Just the fight is blitzing open that shield. Beautiful. Already stunning one of the ESGs. That'll be quite powerful, especially because we're about to come in with a whole bunch of ESGs, nailing for free damage beautifully. We're going to get right behind him and just continue to open fire. Or, you know, we could let our fighters do the job for us because they might actually be able to finish him all completely. I was going to wait until after he tried to do a bubble, but at this point, we're point blank range. We may as well get involved. Gotta wait until actual point blank range, by the way. Oh, face just overload. Gotta make sure we do our maximum damage. And we annihilated him in one go. Wait, you are not. Please tell me you're not. Okay, yeah, you're an alphabet soup destroyer, which can be a little bit scary. I mean, alphabet soup destroyers are not something to take lightly, but they're not. X-type destroyers, which are something to be run away from quite heavily. Okay, you need to die because you're going to kill all my people. Oh, that's a plasma torpedo. It's a fairly large plasma torpedo. It's an S-type plasma torpedo, but it didn't really seem to hit me. Is my aft shield still intact? I'm not really clear on this. Uh, it may just be an angle thing, but he has plasma torpedoes, and that is an unfortunate thing to have aimed towards us. How's our fighters doing? Did both of them get home? I have ordered you to return to base, please, Hornets. Especially because you are down to a single fighter. But hey, maybe it's for the best. If you don't get back involved in this battle, you'll stay alive. Oh, we managed to knife right through our shield. So now we've got to pull away. We did take some penetrating hits on that one. We lost a Phaser X and a Fusion Cannon. And now he's going to take out our aft shield with that. That did not take out anything else, but we do need to stabilize the warp core. This ship does realize he's not going to win. I mean, we've got a Dreadnought as well as a pair of light cruisers that are coming in on him. Although I suppose being irritating is something he can do very well. Hopefully he didn't destroy my fighter squadron and they're still running somewhere off in the black. Can't quite see them because of course there's a purple nebula and we have purple camouflage. Which means we blend in quite nicely. There he is. So if he's ordered to return, he will return automatically at the end of the mission. And he'll be fully kitted out again. So at least there's that. He's not going to have to brave getting anywhere near that point defense system once again. So, his, is that an ESG? No, that was supposed to be a pirate power power system. So, come, preparing to engage with the Hellbore, because we're getting a really nice angle right here. I want all four Hellbores ready to go, because I'd like to break him in half. So, misses. Ooh. Wow, that was really terrible accuracy from the Hellbores. What the heck? And I should not have fired those fusion cannons from that range. That was a serious mistake of mine. But, I can follow up with some Gatling phaser fire in order to make things a little bit extra ugly on him. And we'll let him drift off to our port side, where we can start trying to do some port side battery on him. Wait, are you hunts? No, you can't be hunts. Alrighty, so we managed to kill him. Did take a couple of penetrating hits. It wasn't the most clean battle we've ever done, but it was a successful battle. And that's the important thing. So, mission complete. Closing session. Please wait. And we'll see how much prestige we manage to earn from that one. So we will be moving up, of course, into the battleship carrier as soon as we can. Tile neutralized. Excellent. So we are even more secure here. Hello, we've come back, and we are looking for cool things. Can you provide? Uh, we've got a Regent-class heavy carrier, or heavy battleship, an XDD, which is not terrible at all, FTQs, Gen Xs, yeah. Again, none of the ship that we actually want. We want the Monarch-class battleship carrier. And if you cannot provide, then, well, something. So, of course, little tiny ships, but I want nothing short of my Monarch. Because it's very cool. I want you to buy it for me. And I want it to be here in this screen soon. It's not going to be, but I can hope. Oh, 4, 8, 12. Looks like 12 is the minimum cost, and our fighters are perfectly fine. And we did use up a couple of spare parts on that one, so it's not all that difficult to top off. But let's see if we can't finish securing our little planetary group. We want to take away their ability to actually poke in on us. And we will do that by holding action, which will give us more data about the enemy. Alrighty, what do we got to deal with? We are dealing with a... NMC, a freighter, and a heavy cruiser, which according to that is an X-Type heavy cruiser, it's an NBT. So another battle type with a massive amount of firepower, but not much else to actually back that up. Uh, because we are actually at maximum range, we will overload every single weapon system we've got. And today we're being escorted by the listening post, the HMS Gallant, or Gallant, 
and HMS Magnificent. So the Gallant is, of course, a carrier, you can tell, because he's got only phasers and no actual heavy weapons. So if you can imagine what a non-carrier hydrogen ship has in terms of fighters, imagine what a ship that the hydrogens fly dedicated solely to fighters will be equipped with. Yes, I think you can see how much fun we're about to have. Of course, they're not the best fighters in the universe. They are, of course, only the basic level fighters. Only we get to dis get better fighters unless we specifically map it out in the game. But we should be just fine. So he's a heavy cruiser. Let's sap away from our excess power so we can actually get into the middle of this dogfight. Now, holding action is a simple mission. You need to get to this listening post, get the information, and escape. If you manage to get here before you've destroyed all the enemies, the mission immediately ends successfully. If you get here after destroying all the enemies, you then need to leave the tile because of reasons. So... We're going to come in here and try and jump on this NMC, but it does look like we're going to have to run as fast as we can. Oh, the Ripping Fang, that that freighter is not having a good day at all. I would anticipate he might die before. Looks like the NMC may realize that he actually needs to engage me and nobody else. Because we were clearly matched for each other. And we both started in the center location. So fighters have been deployed. He is a mauler. Okay, I take it back. He's not actually dangerous. Really, the battle tug was the most dangerous thing out there. And the battle tug, as we know, can't really take much damage at all. So all we need to do is get close enough to the pestilence in order to actually nail him with all of our heavy firepower, and that'll annihilate his batteries and he won't be able to do anything in the future. I wonder if he'd fire his mauler at a fighter group. Oh, he's activated his ESG. Oh, unfortunately he managed to actually nail one of us, so we had to open fire early. Okay, he's dead. And fighter group, come home. Come home, you're down to one. I don't want you out here. So we're going to start heading over to this battle tug, because he's the last thing left. Oh, unfortunately the Gallant has taken some pretty rough hits on that one. Come back home, I don't want to have to tell you twice. You seem to make a habit of not listening to orders. Which is a bit of a problem, I will have to admit. So increase the speed of time. Slow down a bit. Wait for the phasers to be ready. You know what, we're going to stop overloading the fusion cannons just so we can get everything loaded up and ready to go. I'm not going to bother with the interceptors, interceptors are ignorable. But we do have enough firepower, probably, to break the NVT. Especially, he was going to do that. Shut that thing down. Okay, took it offline, managed to save the go lot some damage. Get right up in close and personal where our fusion cannons can do the most amount of damage. And tore out 111 points of damage on him. Yeah, he's not having a good day, although he is able to just dish out still a mean amount of firepower. So we're going to maneuver, get around right behind him. He's down to a speed of 8, although we're only doing a speed of 12, so we ain't much better. But I'll have a whole heck of a lot to talk about how much superior we are in terms of acceleration and speed. So again, we're going to ignore the interceptors. I don't think they're all that important. As we come around, I think we've got him mostly dead to rights. Oh, no, he's accelerating. He's got some power back, and he is increasing past a speed of 10. So as he realizes a dreadnought coming in on his stern is probably not the safest thing he's ever done. He's trying to pick up the pace and get on out of here. Fighter will be able to return back to his mothership, looks like, where he will be able to rearm, repair, and come back out with even more firepower. That's not true, it'll be the exact same amount of firepower, but oh, he's about to turn on one of his ESGs. Slow down. We only got one. So we only have the one uh, Hellboard to try and shut off the ESG, but we're able to follow up with a nice little phaser shot, and that annihilated everybody else. Shields were not collapsed on this mission, so all around perfectly successful. Oh, yep, we're not done here. Uh, green alert, we're done. Target the OLP, because we can maximize the speed of time and maximize the speed of the ship. We have nothing else to do. And as I was saying, the victory conditions for this mission are pretty simple. If the battle is still raging, get to the listening post. Once you're within the listening post, it will send over the data, and then you will automatically win. If you have defeated everybody, however, the game gets a little bit lost and decides, okay, you actually need to leave the map before it can actually end the match. Well, actually, you're leaving the map while having accomplished all the victory conditions, and so it considers that a victory for you after the fact. So I think there's a script missing or something that says, hey, if you get to the listening post just in general, even if the enemy team is completely gone, give them the victory. It's not a big deal, but it does mean that if you actually go for all the bonus prestige that you get for annihilating everybody on this mission, uh, you're going to have to wait a little while as you then have to go travel off of the map. Which is a little bit unfortunate. I mean, not hugely so, but slightly. I mean, it's not something that you want to revel in, after all. So, let us head towards the edge of the map where we can warp on out of here with our well-gotten information about whatever is going, going on. Lovely. So, we have successfully escaped. The mission is complete. The data is ours. Let's see if we got anything interesting or good. Because sometimes the information is useless to you. 
It's unfortunate when that happens, but it can happen. All right, let's see what we got uh, about the data. Apparently, Lyra's are planning an ambush soon. Interesting. 350 prestige is a reward, and the tile is neutralized. Pop back over here. Say hello to the border planet, because I would like a monarch battleship carrier. Do you got one? Do you got one, buddy? Well, we got an MHX, FRS, DWH. No, no, no. None of these are monarch class battleship carriers or star bases. You disappoint me still. Looks like we have to earn even more tiles for our nation to make sure that we can get the biggest and the best stuff. Unfortunately, nothing came up for that one. Hi. Shipyard Assault? Sure, why not? Don't we all love Shipyard Assaults? Aren't they the thing that gives our lives meaning? Well, it's a pretty decent amount of prestige, so there is that much for it. Okay, we're going to be doing this all on our own. There is a light cruiser and a light cruiser, and just looks like two so far. There could be a third one. Uh, all weapons overload. We're going to have to do this one and hit hard like a truck. Squaring off against an STJ, you're a single tooth Jaguar, and you're an HDW XP, so Alphabet Soup Destroyer and a Mauler. The Mauler is not all that dangerous because in general the AI does not actually know how to use Maulers and fires them at maximum range. This is not a great use of a Mauler because you'd like to get a Mauler to a close range where it will deal double damage. Maulers are fantastic. If you want to ever see Maulers in action, go check out our Lyran campaign because when we play as the Lyrans, we prefer to bring out the Maulers. All right, let's get ourselves fully kitted up and set up. We're going to go maximum electronic countermeasure. That'll be able to handle any sort of defense that he's got going on. And also, sap that shield budget so we actually get going forward. Now, so far, it looks like it is just going to be the two ships, so the two light cruisers. No heavy cruisers to actually back them up. Of course, there will be the starbase itself, which can hit like a truck, so let's keep that in mind. And let's go defense and defense. We are going to need them just for a little bit of backup on this one. And reduce the speed of time. Oh, he's about to. So, knock it down. You do not get that any longer. Point blank range, open fire. I'm really surprised he has not fired that mauler yet. But our fighters should be able to finish him off. Come on, guys. Go for it. Phase, you, your point blank range, Gatling phasers. Use them. Nope, nope. You're going to waste your fire on pseudo frigates that nobody cares about. Go, go kill his lights. Don't bother. Ugh, who cares? Normalize the hellbores. We're not going to use them in overload anymore. And yeah, we probably should call these guys back home. Actually, it should. It is probably now to a point where we may want to focus on killing them. You, come home. I order it so. Returning now. Get back on board before you die. Phasers, good position to kill. He's dead. Okay, it's one on one, except our weapons are currently offline, and we have taken a little bit of shield damage versus him, who has taken no shield damage and whose all weapons are prepared. Dump a mine and pull away. See if he can't... Oh, no, he's going to get right on top of me, basically. And the fighter, of course, is going to be able to get in there diving on top of all these guys, and I will encourage that. Go dogfight with these guys. I encourage you to engage and kill pseudo frigates for now. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to call you home. Because now he's reached a point where he's starting to get really low. Heavy weapons are charged. Phasers are charged. Unfortunately, our armor has been penetrated in multiple locations. Open fire. Gatling phasers doing an okay job. Come on, port side fusion cannon. You can do it. Come on, stop flickering. Gatling phasers got in the way, but no, the fusion cannon was not able to stop flickering until after he got through, so let's patch that. Our port side shields are completely gone. And come on, fighters, get back on home. I've ordered it so. Come on. Vector in towards me, not towards them. They're down to a single fighter. Oh, that's gonna kill him. Nope, come on, get home. God darn it. Losing a fighter for basically no gosh darn reason. Hi. There we go. A nice little bit of damage. Can I kill you? I can kill you. Can I kill you? Um, yeah, I got a Gatling phaser for it. I mean, it didn't kill you, but it's working. Bit by bit, as we have to go around and around in circles with this guy. Your speed is down to 8, but you're fine, because honestly, that's your normal speed. But now you're dead. Good. So the pseudo have been dealt with. And he's about to go ESG on me. He's about to go double ESG on me. He's about to hurt me considerably. I'll stop, I'll stop. Well, I wasn't able to stop in time. Phase just knock out his shield. We have to deal a little bit of damage on return. Hellborg, good shot on through. Hi, fighter squadron. Go get vengeance. Okay, I think we've got him, and I think the fighter should be able to clean him up. Good job. Okay, lovely. Come back home. Need you back on board. Okay, we've got some serious repairs to get done. I need hellbores, I need fusion cannons, I need you know, everything. Also, I need to know which direction are we traveling on this map? 
Apparently we got jumped basically at the very start of the map. Maximum speed of time. So let's get ourselves positioned to head back in towards the map. Lovely. And kick on some speed. How much more repairs do we need to do? Uh, we got repairs that we're getting done. So once that's done, we'll be good. How much shield power do I have? Probably not a whole heck of a lot. Fusion cannons are good. Oh no, I have a ton. Sap it all. Steal from the shield budget. We'll start to actually engage the uh, Stardox themselves. Depending on what kind of Stardox... Oh, there they are. The Klingon Stardox. That's a bit disappointing, because they will have lots and lots of missiles. So they're not Mirac Stardox, but they're basically built along the same lines. He's going to have a ton of missiles. They're going to come after me, and I'm going to have to try and shoot them down. Phasers. Point, point defense, defense, please. Because we don't have any actual proper point defense. So... We're going to have to reply, rely on sort of our pseudo-defensive point defense. So as long as they just keep shooting down everything, we're perfectly fine and happy. Assuming, of course, nothing goes wrong. Which, when would anything ever go wrong in this game? The phasers, being able to deal with things. We're going to have to rely solely on our heavy weapons. Which, you know, we can, because we have quite a few of them and they're quite powerful. Um, let's slow all the way down. And where's my shield reinforcement currently going to? Oh, it's not focused? Yeah, focus in the front, please. I don't care about the sides at the moment. We're going to be just fine. So defensive tractors have been turned on, but we were able to handle that scatter pack. Okay, because we're not going to be using our phasers at all. We're just going to be using the fusions and the hellbores. I'd like to get it nice and tight in order to make this work. How much shield part do I got? 8.4. Slow down a little bit. We're going at 1. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that did not take out a shield. We need to be closer. We got a lot of power that we can invest into our heavy weapons. Because once the fusion... Yeah, the power drops are right off. Okay, we're just going to sit here and use heavy weapons only until their missiles are finally out. Actually, I should get even closer, honestly. Okay, that dealt with the shields all right. Get them right on top of them. So we've got no more shields. He can shoot missiles? Can't shoot missiles? I think he can't. Is he out of ammunition? That scatter pack may have bled him dry in ammunition. And now we're too close for him to possibly use missiles. Okay, 131 damage just on the heavy weapons alone. If we added our phasers into that mix, it would have killed him. But that would be a little bit too dangerous for my blood. I don't want the incoming missiles to overwhelm our point defense system. Although it does look like they're starting to run out. I didn't hear any more launches, and only incoming phaser fire. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> Just shoot the heavy weapons only. Okay, let's go. Let's start getting on to the next one. Charging up the rest of our weapon systems, and then waiting for these to come off cooldown, which will sap our power generation quite severely. But it does appear that they've run dry on ammunition. And if that's the case, this will be much easier. Their light phaser fire can't really stop us. So we should be able to get on top of them, blast them into oblivion. And be none the wiser. Kind of surprising, though, just how much damage two light cruisers were able to do to a dreadnought. We are a bit of a glass cannon. Slow down. Don't get too close. Yep, he's out of ammo. Lovely. So just get right on top of him. And we can use all of our weapon systems now. Range of zero. Lovely. All weapons. Ooh, 151 damage. Wasn't quite enough to kill him, though. That was. On to the last one. Ah, uh, the Stardock missions. Dealing with all of this one bit by bit. They're so far apart. That's part of the thing that makes it difficult. Although, if you'll recall, one of the previous seasons, I don't think it was last season. It might have been. Actually, no, I think it was last season with the Merc, where we basically did it... Or was it? No, had to be plasma torpedoes. Probably Rhymelon. Well, there was a previous season where we basically did a drive-by of all these Stardocks and destroyed them before the enemy could actually get to us, because we knew we could not win the battle can't remember which one that was but we were grossly outgunned and so we just slipped around the back and hit every, every single one of these from behind destroyed them and got out it was pretty hilarious actually so we're just gonna get right on top of you and do the exact same thing we did to your buddy and there's nothing you can do to stop us because we have a heck of a lot more firepower than you do although he does have a pretty significant amount of defensive systems and are you out of ammo you are also out of ammo lovely pull into a stop and that's all it took was one burst. You think at that point they'd surrender. Now you can, if you want, try and capture them. 
you can do it. It takes a little while. You do get a lot of prestige for it, like a ton of prestige for it. And this is a really easy mission type to do that in. I didn't want to bother. Let's pop back home. Let's see if our Monarch class battleship carrier has finally arrived or not. Hello, shipyard. I'm looking for an MNVX. Can you provide? Um, I'm not seeing it. There's a Regent class dreadnought, which is what we used to be in. That was the Exile, and it's the Regent with the X upgrade, which is pretty cool. But it's not a Monarch class battleship carrier, which is what we're looking for. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tarak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon. Leave a comment and I will see you all in the next episode.